baked or fried? Yeah, that, I'm being a little facetious there, but uh, we're for this summer we're in the, kind of the bullseye for a cicada invasion. Um, it's going to be a little bit further south, but I think you, even up in this area you're going to see a lot and hear a lot of cicadas. <clears throat> there's two different types. Uh, there's a 17-year, and I think there's an 11 or a 13-year one that are emerging both this summer. So it's going to be really noisy, and it's probably going to be a little messy out there, too. So don't be surprised if you see a ton of cicadas. And the whole baked or fried. When I was a kid, I you know, tried different foods. and that. I actually tried, uh, I think it was fried and chocolate dipped cicadas. They weren't bad. They were a little crunchy, but they were pretty good. I would imagine the chocolate <laughs> really made it. Yeah. Trapping season, land trapping ends, uh, well, soon. Yes, this week. Uh, in Illinois, at least, uh, for raccoons, uh, coyotes, possums, skunks, foxes, um, and muskrats and otter, or excuse me, mink, that's all done on the 15th. Uh, so you have to have your traps out, you have to have your sets out, the whole bit. And uh, you can get a ticket if they're still out there, even though they're not set. So keep that in mind. Uh, beaver and otter in Illinois uh, keeps going until March 31st, but you can only use larger size traps to keep muskrats and raccoons out of them. Do you do much of that? Oh, yeah. I do a lot of trapping. Uh, in fact, I was trapping coons up until last week. Uh, and it's mostly, they're not worth a whole lot. Uh, the biggest or the largest amount I got this year on a coon was ten dollars, which was great. But you know, I I sold some the other day, which were really nice, no rubs, nice and prime, big, and I only got three dollars on a carcass. So well, at least you're not picking up alongside the road anymore. I used Dave. to do I know. that. We talked about that last <laughs> month. I used to. CRP mid management. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, both for Iowa and Illinois, uh, all the CRP contracts in the last four or five years have required something called mid-contract management, which basically is doing something to disrupt the cover and enhance it. It could be disking, it could be burning, uh, it could be interseeding, uh, more flowers or legumes into the seeding, um, but just something to enhance the seeding. That stuff is on the contract, and if you have any questions, call your FSA or NRCS office and ask them to check for you. And some of it is really time sensitive, like if you have trees, and you have to prune them, we're actually getting down to the end of the pruning season. Uh, with this warm weather, I think it was two weeks ago, I pruned a couple walnuts, and there was actually sap flow. And that's kind of unusual for early February. So, But, you know, some of this stuff is fairly time-sensitive, and for sure, at least in Illinois, and I think it's in Iowa, too, you can't go after April 15th. Uh, that's considered, from April 15th to August 1st, is considered the primary nesting season. So you can't do the practices then. Uh, you can do them before April 15th or after August 1st, though, depending on your contract. But a lot of um, the practice schedules are broken up into three years. So you might have something in 24, 25, and 26. Mm -hmm. So check your contracts. If you have any questions, call the USDA buildings and ask. But uh, you can get tossed out of the program or you might lose part of your payments if you don't do it what you're supposed to. And at least in Whiteside, I've known, noticed uh, they are sending out notices now to landowners saying, hey, you got something due this year. If you have any questions, give us a call. This is what you have to do. So All right. That's good. Check. Yeah. Again, Dave Harrison visiting with his winter frost seeding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking before we went on the air about the mud winter and uh, named because the ground never really froze up thoroughly. And we didn't have a whole lot of snow. We had a lot of snow, but it only lasted, what, two weeks? And uh, what that snow did is it insulated the soil so it didn't fr freeze. So now the ground's still, you know, it might be frozen an inch down if we're lucky. But uh, you still have time, if you can get out there and the ground's firm, to put that seed out. And, uh, you know, things like native grass, native flowers, clover alfalfa can be seeded this time of year, and it works out really well. Hmm. Um, usually you have to put some kind of carrier with it to spin it on. Um, you can drill it on, too, if you want. Just don't go too deep because there's going to be a lot of soil activity that will take the seed down anyway. Wildlife issues and how to handle them legally. Yeah, in Illinois, you can't just take the gun out and shoot something just because it's <laughs> giving you a problem. Legally, you're supposed to get a nuisance permit uh, from either the game warden or the wildlife biologist. And, They'll come out, evaluate the situation, and give you a number of permits based on the damage they see, and that includes deer. Uh, I believe you can take up to 10 deer on a nuisance permit, 
You can shoot them at night, you can shoot them with a rifle, and I think you can bait them. But I don't know that you can keep the carcasses. I think you have to dispose of them, if I remember right. And I know that's true for small animals, like raccoons, beavers, things like that. Nothing can be kept off the animal. It has to be disposed of, buried, incinerated, et cetera. There's a small report you have to fill out after you're done with the permit. You submit that back to the permitting agency, Illinois, it's IDNR. And it's a fairly simple thing. There's no charge for it, and it's the legal way to do it. So Always like to stay legal. Oh, yeah. If possible. You bet. Uh, bush honeysuckle control. Yeah. Uh, boy, bush honeysuckles become a real problem. And every woodlot I walk into, whether it be Iowa or Illinois these days, has bush honeysuckle in it. And the problem with it is it grows so thick that it shades other plants out, and it produces a herbicide of its own to eliminate anything underneath of it. So if you have, you know, an oak hickory timber, you're not going to have any small oaks or hickories growing. The stuff will actually take them out. The nice thing about bush honeysuckle, though, is it stays green or the leaves come out very, very early in the spring before the wildflowers and the trees put buds on it or bud out with leaves. So you can control it in February on a warm day with Roundup. Um, usually what we do is we go in and cut it, treat the stumps, and then come back for the next two or three years and spray whatever sprouts come up. Because if you don't kill the complete root, it'll re-sprout on you. And that's the time right now that you can sometimes get in there and spray that stuff. Uh, but do it early. If you start to see wildflowers starting to pop up, quit, because then you'll kill everything. Which There's a school of thought that if you don't do anything, everything's going to be dead anyway, so go ahead and spray it. Yeah, I don't necessarily buy into that. I, it's a timing issue. If you can get it done early in the spring, like I said, February, if it's at least 50 degrees and it's sunny, the Roundup will work. It'll be slow, but it will work. So Again, busy with Dave Harrison. Raccoon control debate. There's a debate? Yes. Um, I don't know about Iowa. I was thinking Iowa opened up a season, but I know for sure Missouri just said there's no season. You can shoot them at any time you want just because of the nuisance problem, and nobody's trapping them anymore. You know, it used to be trappers, coon hunters controlled the population pretty well, and uh, what it gets down to is if you don't control the raccoons, skunks, possums, they eat most of the eggs or kill the hens on the ground nesting birds. Uh, raccoons can climb, um, possums can climb trees too, so they'll get in things like bluebirds and chickadees, and they'll raid their nests too. So it's, it's a real issue. There's also a disease issue with raccoons. They carry roundworm and a couple other diseases that are kind of nasty. And the example I always give you know, even if you live in a suburb or, you know, just close to town, if you let your children out in the yard without shoes on, there's a chance they'll contract raccoon roundworm because what it does is it goes through the bottom of the foot into the body. So, And if you live anywhere near woods, if you have cats that have food out, dogs, whatever, you're going to have raccoons. There's no way to get around it. And um, so Missouri for sure opened it up said, <clears throat> you know, you can shoot them any time you want as long as it's legal to shoot where you're at, or you can trap them the whole bit. Um, Illinois hasn't done that yet, and I know there's been several wildlife organizations that are promoting trapping them to get the females in April and May. That's illegal, so be aware of that. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it is illegal, and you can get ticketed. Um, my cousin, I may have told this story before, down by St. Louis in Illinois, had a raccoon in his garage. He trapped it threw it in the back of his truck, was driving it out of town, and got stopped by the game warden. And the guy said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I trapped this raccoon. I was going to take it out and dispose of it. He goes, no, you're not. He said, one, I could take your truck right now and all your equipment that's in it. He said, I'm going to give you a warning because it seems like you didn't know what was going on. He says, well, how did you know I was even, he said, well, the neighbor called. Oh, neighbor gee. saw him set the trap and grab the <laughs> raccoon, so she called the game warden on him. So there's ramifications for this stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just do it and walk away, and it goes back to the, the wildlife issues and how to handle them legally. But in Illinois, you have to have a nuisance permit. Just get one. Yeah. Iowa, like I said, they were considering an open season. I don't know that they did it yet. You have to check with your local game warden or the ID in our office. Um, Missouri, if you're in Missouri and listening to us, I think you're good to go. Okay. If, so. if they're online listening yeah, to us that's in Missouri. Right. Of course they are. <laughs> Volunteer opportunity. Yeah, I was going to tell you, if, you know, if you're retired and you like doing some you know, either conservation education work 
or just conservation work, check with your local SWCD and USDA office. A lot of those offices and agencies are looking for volunteers. You know, even if you don't want to go outside, if there's something in the office you like to do, you know, in just a few hours a week, check with them. A lot of times they'll do that. And they, most of those agencies have volunteer programs. I know when I was working in Morrison, um, we worked with a group of seniors, I think it was out of Rock Rockford, and I don't even remember the name of the agency now, but it was an, a non-governmental agency that basically took seniors who wanted to do volunteer work and matched them up with businesses they had on the list. And we had two or three people come in, and they were really, really good help. I would think so. That's interesting. Yeah. Nitrates in the groundwater. Yeah, I know it's been an issue in Iowa, and it's starting to be a real big issue in Illinois. Um, you know, Whiteside County is kind of a strange county, you know, geographically because it's the northern part's silt, silty type soil and very steep or hilly, and the southern part, at least a good chunk of it, is flat and sandy. And in those sandy soils, a lot of people still have shallow wells. Um, over there, they call them sand points. You know, they're 20, 20, 30 feet deep. And a lot of them are really high in nitrates. Um, if you've been listening to the news the last 15, 20 years, there's something called blue baby syndrome. And what it is is babies will ingest water that's high in nitrate, and it basically affects their ability to get oxygen to the blood, and they turn blue in extreme cases. And it's a real problem with little okay. kids, and it, there's maybe some impact to adults, too. Um, there are some things you can do as a farmer. You know, not, some nitrates are natural, but some or a lot of them come from anhydrous application. Cover crops is an easy way to keep the nitrogen in the field and not have it run into the groundwater. Uh, you know, rye, you know, we, we, and I've talked about this before, turnips, radishes, things like that all take in nitrates and hold them instead of releasing them. A so, couple so, more talking yep. points, and, and you always throw something I never know. <laughs> Where are you going to go what with I'm it? Talking about. What, you do, what you do not want something for nothing. Yeah, well, that relates back to the, the one little thing I've got on the top about the SWCD uh, tree sales. There's also some free trees available through Living Lands and Waters in the Quad Cities. They give free trees out to a lot of these conservation organizations that pass them on to landowners. So if you're going to get trees or you want some free trees, get a hold of the SWCD office and let Tricia know. And I know she's getting oaks and pecans this year, which is kind of unusual. I don't think they've had pecans in the past. Um, but So if you want some free trees, get a hold of her and let her know. All right. Freezing an insect overwintering, the good and bad and the ugly. Yeah. Well, like I said, I thank Clint Eastwood there. <laughs> and if, if you're of the age Gary and I are, we, we remember the spaghetti westerns. Oh, yeah. Clint Eastwood, you know, they were basically Italian westerns that he made, and he kind of got his start in show business on that. But anyway, um, with the type of winter we've had where we haven't had a whole lot of cold weather, it's probably going to impact insects. Uh, I saw a report the other day that there's going to be a huge hatch of ticks this year because of the mild winter. So that's something to keep in mind for your pets and yourself. Uh, the other thing is emerald ash borer. You know, emerald ash borer has devastated the green ash and, to a certain extent, white ash in this area. And uh, yeah, without freezing temperatures, they just thrive. And we just haven't had enough cold weather to knock them back. So that's the other thing. And then back to the cicadas, too. I think that's why you're probably going to see a huge number of cicadas, too, because they overwintered so well, um, you know, going into this, their entry year. So, but ticks and emerald ash borer are the big ones, you know, and there's probably going to be some other, um, you know, other insects, too, that might impact our farmer friends, too. So good time to be doing scouting if you're farming and see what's out there. Always interesting visiting with you. If people want to find out more information about the Whiteside County area, how can they best do that, Dave? Uh, I would call Tricia at 815-772-2124, extension 3. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. You're listening to AM 1340 KROS, Clinton, Iowa, FM 105.9. And K